So coming on to the slightly more difficult area of financing your study. This is something which has obviously been in the news and it is a great concern to a lot of students. So much so that they're actually ruling out going to university because of it. Because now all higher education institutions, universities and colleges, are allowed to charge up to £9,000 a year in tuition fees. So if you're doing a three-year course, that's an automatic debt of £27,000 and that's a mega amount of money which we completely understand that that's a lot of money to consider going off to university. But there's, there's some myths that I'd like to bust here and there's also a whole load of variety of, of loans and grants which you can apply for, some of which you have to pay back, some of which you don't. So first of all, you don't need any cash to pay up front for university you pay for all of it after you graduate. So you don't have to worry about paying anything back until you've actually got a job and you've got a job and you're earning over £21,000 a year, which is a fairly decent salary for anybody from that. So you only have to pay back any of the money after that £21,000. And then they don't start taking out massive great chunks out of your salary. They will only take a small percentage of your salary depending how much you earn. So if you only earn over £21,000 they will take a small amount. If you get a brilliant salary of £120,000 they will take a lot more. So they will, it will just work it out on based on what, you've, what you're earning. Now if you never earn over £21,000 you won't have to ever repay it. Obviously I'll hope you earn over £21,000 because that's much better but if you don't, don't have to repay it. There's no debt collectors, you're not going to get big knocks on the door to come and collect that money. And if you, if you come from a low income family, if, you're, if your carers don't earn, I think it's something like £42,000, something like that, you will get a maintenance grant and that will help pay for your living costs. So there is some money that you can still get from the government. They won't affect your credit score. So any things like if you're applying for a credit card or a mortgage or anything like that, if you've still got a big loan outstanding, doesn't matter. And after 30 years, if you still haven't paid it all off, it just gets wiped out. And then many people from that will never pay it back. So when I read some of that, I was like, oh, it's actually not that bad. Actually, you know, I'm only going to be in a position when I can pay it back when I can afford to. So that was a little bit reassuring from that. So I'm going to give you a little bit of information about the student finance side. It is quite complicated and we have expert student finance advisors down in the advice shop. So if you have any specific questions, which I don't cover here, please come in and have a chat, chat to them. So you get loans and you get grants. The difference between a loan and a grant is that a loan you have to pay back and a grant you don't. So first of all, you get loans for your fees. These are all in place for when you actually start your university course. So you don't have to literally sort of sign a big check for £9,000 when you start. It's all done by someone called Student Finance England. So that's sorted. You then get maintenance. Now these are for your living costs. So these are things for your rent, bills, going out, food. Now there's a variety of either loans or grants. Now the way these are assessed are quite complicated and it basically depends if you live at home or if you live in London or outside London and your household income. So that's your parent income as well. But the maximum amount you can get, if you live at home, you can get up to about £6,000. Now that isn't going to probably cover your whole of your maintenance and your living expenses for the whole of the year. And it is probably likely you're going to have to get a small job, but there is money still available for you to get. And as I said, repayments only start when you earn over £21,000 a year. So it's not all doom and gloom. There is lots of other financial support. So if you've got children, there's a grant that you can get. Again, if you're a pa you know, parent, you can get money from that. If your children are still living at home, if you're a carer, you can get money. And if you're a disabled student, you can get money as well. If you're looking to get the disabled students allowance, there is another form you have to fill in. And there's a lady here at the college called Vicky Wilson who will be able to help with that. Her details are on the slide just there. Now, all of that finance package is all through an organisation, as I mentioned, called Student Finance England. And they're the ones which manage all of these loans and grants. But each individual institution will maybe have extra financial support. 
So say here at the college we have a no National Student Scholarship Fund and that's for disadvantaged students so people can apply for that. Other universities, because it is getting competitive out there, students want you to come to their universities, so some of them are starting to offer various freebies, like I saw one the other day offering tablets for people. So those are all things just to sort of bear in mind, just to consider when you're weighing up your decision. So there's the website Student Finance to go for more information. And if you're considering an NHS funded course, so those are courses, degrees, which are related to jobs which you go into work in the NHS, like a nurse, midwife, physio and so on. You actually get your fees paid for from that and there's lots of information on that website there.